Hello everyone and thank you for joining us today. I'm so excited to be talking with Travis Cloak around the Faces of Dyslexia campaign, but also um, a bit about Travis's story. But before we start, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we're meeting on today. I'm on the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. Welcome Travis to the show. Thank you for joining me today. No problem. Thank you so much for having me. So you've um, been disclosing that you've had, you have dyslexia now for a little while. Can you tell us what life was like for you growing up? Yeah, it was obviously an interesting one, especially going through school. Um, I, all, all, I guess my mum and dad always knew I lacked somewhere in my, in my reading and writing. Um, I, I went to a speech, th a speech therapist as a young age. Um, I had a list, my teeth were in the wrong place, my jaw was realigned. So I spent a lot of time and years there. And then I guess once I kind of went into maybe seven and eight, that's when they picked up and said, maybe there's something else here. Maybe you're lacking somewhere. And that's where I probably got a bit more insecure about my own learning. Um, I never wanted to read out loud in the classroom. Those little things like that started to creep in. So mum and dad obviously sent me off and had a few tests um, to find out maybe where I am lacking and if I need a little bit more work. And that's when they found out I, I have a case of dyslexia. and um, Ever since then, it's, it's been a battle, but also uh, something I've been talking about and, and open about my whole adult life, I guess. And what have some of the battles been for you? Obviously, um, through the back end of high school and when you've got to read in a class or you've got to share a story that's in a book, you, you kind of look at the teacher and hope the teacher doesn't bring it up or doesn't point at you. So you got very shy in class. You, you remove yourself sometimes and become very insular in class. And um, I never realised what I was doing till it was almost too late. So for me now as a 30, 33 year old adult, um, I, I personally understand what the battles were like as a teenager. I never got bullied or picked on because of it, but at the same time, it definitely was a disadvantage uh, going into my, my early adulthood, uh, I guess, in football. And do you think it's affected you throughout your career and in your personal life, or do you think you're able to manage it? Um, I've been able to manage it pretty well. I've learned a few tricks. Um, through school, I was more of a creative background. So I guess that always helped me out a little bit. Um, when I did my VCE, my only academic subject was English. Um, the rest of them were arts-based. Um, people find it very interesting through school. So at the Yarra Valley Grammar, um, they had a very, very good section for, for early learning, uh, for extra curriculum and a really, really fantastic hearing um, department there. So they specialise in this. And um, I, I was an arts captain in year 12. I wasn't sports captain, um, I was art. So I really dedicated myself to learning, but also excelling and, and putting my dyslexia behind me by, by being creative. And uh, it definitely helped me, but at the same time, it probably didn't help me transitioning into the real world um, by trying to push it behind me and cover it up. Well, I have to say I'm a little bit jealous. I got kicked out of art class by the time I was in year 11. They said, don't waste your time. You're never going to be able to progress very far. So go and pick another subject. So I was uh, very disheartened by that comment. And so um, uh, it's not a skill, even though we're really excited to be launching our campaign and our Faces of Dyslexia. And um, I had no idea when we asked you if you were interested in being the judge that you had that background in art and that passion for art. So do you still um, do any art now? Uh, I went away for, for a little while. Obviously football consumed a lot of my life and a lot of my spare time was developing my football game. Um, but I also used it as a bit of a, an avenue to get away from football. I, I used to just always draw and muck around at home. You find a pen and piece of paper and doodle away. So it's always been somewhere in my life, um, but I haven't really dedicated time to getting back into it. But I guess now as a, as a retired footballer and I'm in ISO once again, um, my daughter's two and a half, she's getting very creative. So even this morning we had the crayons out, the pencils, we made some drawings, um, I taught a little cr uh, creativity cutting things. So it's starting to come back. And I think the more I grow up now and want to show my creative side to my daughter, the more I will get back into art. So um, I have been looking online about a few courses to do once isolation finishes here in uh, Melbourne. And um, I look forward to being part of my, my future going forward. Are there any tips or tricks you can give our listeners or viewers today around creating a self portrait? I've been on radio recently. And we've talked about how do you create a good selfie? Um, how do you draw, which I can't comment on at all, but do you have any tips that um, any of our listeners might 
be able to pick up and use for the competition? Well, obviously taking a selfie, let's, let's grab our phone. Um, we all love taking selfies. It's the modern, modern era. Um, the phones are fantastic. Just got a new one and shows all my imperfections now, all my wrinkles that are coming through. Um, a good filter also, will fix that. Yeah, looking at some older photos from our wedding and only four years ago, when, uh, gee, the last four years have been bad to me. It's aged me, uh, but that's another one. So um, drawing, don't expect perfection. Don't expect to draw like the photo. Um, that it's not realistic. Obviously we see these people on social media can draw and they're fantastic. That's their job. We're not asking for Picasso to come here. We're asking you to sit down, pen and paper, crayons, whatever you got laying around the house, have some fun with it. Um, take the mickey out of yourself. If you want to draw yourself with a beard, you don't normally have it. If you want to draw yourself with long hair, do that too. Um, be as creative as you can and also just express yourself the best way you can. Get away from the stock standard colors of blonde or brown hair and cream is your face. If you want to paint your skin red, you do that, no problems. Um, the more creative you can be, the better it'll look. And I really love the words you said around, don't be perfect. And no, it is all, all about expressing yourself and expressing how uh, this competition in particular is around expressing how dyslexia makes us feel. And um, we've had some great entries in so far that have been extremely creative. And you know, it is about showing all the different ways that dyslexia can present for all of us. It is, and I think that's the thing. If, even if you're not dyslexic, jump on board this and, and do a picture because we're all in this at the moment, this lockdown situation in, in Melbourne and Australia and the world. We've got time on our hands. Parents, put your kids at the, a dining table, piece of paper in front of them, tell them to draw a picture. Please submit it. It's, um, maybe it kills two hours at a time and it gives your parents a little bit more normality or a bit of realism back in your life. So make it part of their, their arts, part of their stay at home for schooling. Um, let's use this as, a, as an avenue to promote dyslexia, but also promote a, a positive mental health at home and creativity that we're all um, craving for. Which is so important right now, trying to create that positive mental health at home. So thank you so much, Travis, for coming on the show today. Hopefully we can touch base with you again. We really, really support you um, putting your face behind this campaign and helping us raise awareness of dyslexia because it really is a hidden disability in our society. And the more people that can join this competition and campaign, the better for all of us. So have a wonderful day. Stay warm where you are. Hope you get some sun. I don't think we're going to in Melbourne. Now, uh, thank you so much for having me. Obviously, it is a, um, a passion of mine, obviously learning and creating positive health, um, positive mental health also. So I struggle with dyslexia. It's been part of my life my whole way through it. Um, you're not alone. There's so many people out there actually have this and you wouldn't even know. So you can get through life hiding it um, and trying to promote positive, but at the same time, embrace who you are, be, be an individual, be who you are. And especially at the moment, try your best not to be perfect because we're not and you put too much, too much expectations on yourself to be perfect at the moment. Well, that's a great way to finish our conversation today. So thank you so much again, Travis. We look forward to talking to you. Stay well. And for everyone that's listened in today, thank you so much. We really look forward to seeing your different art. And uh, Travis looks forward particularly in seeing all the art that's coming through. So thanks, everyone, for joining us. Have a wonderful Friday. And until then, bye for now. Thank you.